about updates from space for your vehicle? Well, among other things, Continental doing some pretty cool things and showing some really neat stuff here at CES. And Alex joins us from Continental. Alex, welcome into tomorrow. How are you, sir? Thank you very well. We have a very exciting show here. Yes, it, it, indeed. And in, in the morning we chose to do this interview, it's the coldest morning here yes. in, in Lost Wages. So we're, <laughs> we're actually at like freezing. Uh, for us Miami boys, that's tough. But you're from Germany. You're used to cold weather. Uh, I lived in California in Silicon Valley for a while, so I got uh, also spoiled with good weather. <laughs> exactly. Now, tell me about this whole updates from space thing. Now, you know, we're, we're always talking about updating our vehicles, maybe having to go into the dealer because there's something we've got to get done. This, I'm understanding, maybe eliminates the need for always having to go back to a dealer and wait for an update for our cars? Yeah, first of all, we want to want, want to keep the vehicle always fresh and up to date when it comes to functions, right? Think about your smartphone, it's being updated, you get new apps all the time, and we want to do that to the vehicles as well. Uh, and secondly, what you just mentioned is if there's anything we need to adapt the car, there's some warranty or something, we can do that over the air as well. So any security, safety thing we want to update, don't worry about it. It's done basically while you're sleeping. Yeah, that's good. And, and unless it's in the garage, I guess. It's got to be outside, I guess, if we're updating from, uh, from space. So how does that work? Is it, is it a download from satellite, that kind of thing? Uh, is there anything special that the consumer would have to do to update his or her car or truck? No, actually, no. What we want to do is, we instead of just using cellular, we want to add uh, satellite communication to be able to broadcast, actually, uh, update packages to thousands of vehicles at a time. And in areas where you actually don't have good uh, LTE reception, for example, think about the middle of the wait, desert. Wait, wait, ATE is what? <laughs> LTE, so the 4G networks. Oh, 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 LTE, I'm sorry, right, right. No, you're right. Exactly. You're in the desert. If you wander too far from Vegas, uh, you're not going to have much coverage, right? Right. So we're able then basically to use both. Um, update ways in a comprehensive way and for larger packages for example then and safety critical things we can broadcast it over uh, the satellite network into thousands of vehicles and other things by other means maybe other packages are delivered via the uh, cellular ne cellular network uh, depending on the needs and the criticality of the update. So that's kind of cool. So I guess unless it's a, a mechanical problem or something like that, a recall of a you know breaking issue that is not a software thing, uh, you might still have to go to a dealer, you know, bring the car back for that. But there's so many more things that you can do uh, with updating electronically and just handling it that way. And then maybe does a customer even know uh, that that they've been updated? Now, first of all, um, the car, he, he doesn't see anything because we would uh, integrate the satellite communication into our antenna modules. So basically from the packaging, the vehicle would look the same as today. Uh, you would not rec recognize how the update is done via satellite, via cellular. It actually offers a very cost competitive way to uh, push updates to mini vehicles instead of using the bandwidth of cellular networks today. So for you as a consumer, it's just cheaper, more convenient, and the vehicle is always fresh and up to date. And as a consumer, that's really what counts. You know, we're, we say on the air all the time in our 22 years on the air doing this show about technology that most people don't care how it works, just they want to know it does, right? Exactly. And I think you know it from the smartphone. You don't care how it works, it just works, right? right. No, exactly. Now, I'm noticing on the cab of, of this particular uh, vehicle that we're that you're demo demonstrating, there's a, a big antenna. Uh, is that just because of demonstration purposes? Is it the, the idea as, as we get further into tomorrow, if you will, uh, that it gets smaller and smaller and ends up becoming uh, like an embedded GPS antenna, that sort, of th that sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, we are collaborating here with partnering with Inmarsat. They are a global provider of satellite communications to uh, naval and also aviation. So we're, we're on their network because of armed forces. So our show is heard on the armed forces networks for American armed forces and very familiar with Inmarsat. And they do a good job of covering the world, really. Right, exactly. And they're not yet in automotive. That's why right now we don't have an automotive antenna. But what Continental does to the game is actually bringing that technology into automotive and integrating it to an antenna module that looks pretty much the same as today. Very cool. So um, what else then do, do updates do for us? I mean, it's not something that the consumer has to set up, right? It's just going to happen. It's just going to happen like you have it in your um, smartphone today, right? Or even on your computer. Uh, some of the updates you won't even recognize. They are functional updates just to ensure uh, the back structure, the backbone, basically security and safety of the system. But some others would just change maybe the HMI into a new theme, something, new services integrated. And so the vehicle basically becomes better by the day. Yeah. Well, that's cool. It might even just be something as simple as uh, as a cosmetic thing. We get into the car the next morning and say, oh, that's new. That's different. You know, I like that. You know, or some other choices for, for backgrounds or whatever the case might be.
might be in in displays, right? Yeah, and certainly we're going to see more uh, learning over the time of the week because we are working on adaptive, uh, basically HMI, so the human machine interface. Everything the driver can touch and operate in the vehicle will more be personalized uh, and can learn over time. So the vehicle again uh, is more your vehicle and getting better over the lifetime. Now across from us here at uh, the poolside area at the Renaissance, I'm seeing something uh, called the remote cloud key from Continental. That sounds fascinating, but what does that mean? Yeah, think about services you can enable when you can gain secure and re reliable access to your vehicle um, to service providers. Give you an example, you want to have your windshield repaired or replaced. You don't want to give maybe the, the car key away or you don't want to go to a workshop, but now be able to um, have a service that ensures that you give that car key to someone that can only open the door, not start it, have access for an hour to replace the windshield, and then it's gone again. Could be pretty convenient, right? Or think about filling your gas tank. It's becoming pretty popular right now that somebody comes, fills your gas, and you don't need to worry about it. You don't. Even somebody can come to my house and fill my tank. I don't have to go to the gas station even. <laughs> Where is that popular so far? <laughs> not in Miami yet. Not in, I know from California for sure. I know a friend, and so if your car parked outside at the street or in the, in the driveway, and somebody comes and fills up your gas and leaves, and you don't need to worry. You don't need to stand in line in the gas station. So that's pretty convenient. Yeah, cool. And so that's the kind of thing. Then we're we're really unlocking the vehicle remotely, kind of like we were able to do uh, with a lot of new technology with smart homes uh, to unlock the door to let the, the delivery man put the package inside or let the, the housekeeper in or any or let the, the, the kids in after school, whatever. But now we're able to do the same thing with the car thanks to technology from Continental. Right. And the key here uh, is remote, at the remote cloud key is actually to be able to provide that to existing vehicles. So we are not building on vehicles that are going into the market in two or three years or connected vehicles that are today out there, but we can basically enable it for your car that, had, that you have in a driveway today. Awesome. Well, see, now that's good thinking and, and, and kind of protecting us even into tomorrow. I love that. At the other end of the pool, am I seeing a drone on a table? Does, what does that have to do with what you guys are doing? Uh, one technology we are showing here is a high-resolution flash lighter. So you might have heard it uh, in the context of highly automated driving, where we need another sender than today's cameras and radars to get a really high resolution image of the surroundings of the car and enable really highly automated driving functions. We are showing here a static high resolution flash LiDAR and this can also be applied to industrial means and like drones and for uh, observing the environment or certain things. So you're not replacing uh, that sort of, uh, of LiDAR with a, a drone that's going to follow the car the whole time. That's not what it is, right? Uh, that's not what it is today, but actually a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, just, send, just send the residual checks to me. It gets ME in care of this radio station. Uh, <laughs> but that's cool. I mean, I like the fact that you guys have a lot of forward-thinking things going on with a lot of partners that you're working with for, for various vehicles and, and technologies. Uh, it, it's really cool. It caught our attention. Uh, so that's why we had to you know, get over here and chat with you. Thank you so much for your interview. And our pleasure. Enjoy the show. And the same to you. I know it's going well. Uh, just got to put on a jacket to come out and see uh, your very cool exhibits here at the Renaissance.